Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how to apply for or renew a blue badge. Uh, please stay tuned until the end of the video, I'll also hand out some handy tips uh, for a situation which may apply to you in terms of providing any additional evidence you may need to, uh, to your application or further information to assist the council in hopefully issuing you a blue badge. Um, before you do start this I'd highly recommend uh, reading the information and making sure you've got all the documentation that you require um, at hand before you start it will just make things a lot more simpler and the website to go to and the only website you should be going to to apply for a blue badge is www.gov.uk forward slash apply dash blue dash badge or you can just google blue badge and you only go to the government uh, website no other website is the one they should be going to. It's all online now. So again, it's the gov.uk website that takes care of the blue badge application. So step one in applying for the blue badge is checking your eligibility. So the first question you answer is who are you applying for? And from the drop down list, you hit either yourself, someone else, or your organization. So I'm going to pick you. And then you hit next. The next stage in checking your eligibility is select the local authority responsible for issuing blue badges in the area where you usually live. Only one badge can be held by a person at any one time. Enter your full home postcode and select find. Alternatively, if you know the local authority, select the local authority name option and enter a part of the name and select find. So in this search box, you can either punch in your postcode and you can just hit find and it will generate uh, what is going to be your local authority or if you actually just know your local authority you just hit this um, selection point and then you can just type in uh, your local authority so for example your borough if it's like Newham, Redbridge, uh, Barking and Dag Dagenham, Brent and so on and so forth. As you continue within the check eligibility field you're then asked check eligibility for you you select one of the options below so one of the options is I am registered as blind, severely sight impaired. I have either a certificate of vision impairment or a BD8 form signed by a consultant ophthalmologist stating that I am severely sight impaired, in parenthesis blind, and I wish to be registered as severely sight impaired with my local authority. Uh, I receive the higher rate of the mobility component of the disability living allowance. I receive a personal independence payment as I meet a moving around description for the mobility component because I can either not stand or can stand but walk no more than 50 meters. This is a score of eight points or more. I receive a war pensioners mobility supplement. I receive a tariff within one to eight inclusive of the armed forces compensation scheme and have been assessed as having a permanent and substantial disability which causes inability to walk or very considerable difficulty in walking or none of the above apply and then press next for more options. Picking from one of these options, apart from none of the above, uh, will be fairly straightforward in your application for a blue badge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick none of the above, and there'll be more options to complete. There's some things that you have the uh, information you have to provide and documentation as well. So that's going to be the one that's going to require a lot more um, more work on your behalf. So let's go ahead with none of the apply. Please uh, press next for uh, more options. And then you're greeted with another set of options for you to click on. So again, select one of the options below. So I'm over the age of two and I have a permanent and this substantial disability, which means that I'm unable to walk. I'm over the age of two and have a permanent and substantial disability, which means I have very considerable difficult difficulty in walking. I drive a vehicle regularly and have a severe disability in both arms. That means I'm unable to operate all or some types of parking meter. I drive a vehicle regularly and have a severe disability in both arms that means I have considerable difficulty operating all or some types of parking meter. I'm under the age of three and have a medical condition that means I must always be accompanied by bulky medical equipment. I'm under the age of three and have a medical condition that means I must always be kept near a vehicle in case I need emergency medical treatment or none of the above apply. So you can see which one fits your category and then you'll hit next. As you go to next, uh, you're greeted with this uh, statement. You may be eligible for a blue badge, but your eligibility will need to be assessed by your local authority. 
This may mean that they ask you to attend a mobility assessment. Then you ask, do you wish to apply for a blue badge online? So you'll click on yes. And before you start the application, you just hit by a disclaimer just with some information. Um, and just asks you to provide some information which can help with your application. So for example, your national insurance number, if you have a driving license number, you could uh, provide that as well. And if you already have a blue badge and you're uh, you know, renewing that, then obviously have the blue badge to hand as well. You also want to have a passport style photograph, uh, and then as this will appear on the back of the badge. And just some information about what to do once the application ends. It says it takes around about 45 minutes or so to complete the application, but do be advised that if you do not um, continue with the application for 30 minutes or so, if you just wander away from it, then it will um, time out. So please be advised of that as well. And you get as many options as possible to save at each stage, so you don't have to complete it all in one go if, uh, if, if, if you're not able to do so. So once you read that important information, you hit next. Okay, so we're starting a brand new application for a blue badge and we're at um, section number one, personal details. So in personal details, you're greeted by a familiar uh, box here with lots of information about yourself, including such things as your title, your name, and date of birth and genders and such and so forth. Uh, be advised of the asterisk. When there's an asterisk, it means it's a mandatory field. You have to fill it in before you can continue onwards and obviously other things like for example national insurance number it's not mandatory but it can always help if you read this box so that we can process your application we may check the national insurance number you have given us with third parties in order to verify your identity by providing the information requested you're consenting to your details being submitted to us third parties for this purpose so it's completely up to you if you want to provide that it may actually be handy just to speed things up uh, potentially maybe if it's a new application as well it could be a bit more quicker and a driving license number for example if you want to provide that but again it's not mandatory then you scroll on down and you're obviously going to be providing your address you can make things a bit more easier if you just punch in your postal code and it will uh, generate your address like most websites do nowadays or you can just punch it in uh, manually and then you want to punch in any address history of your own if it if it's not the main address for the past three years if you've lived anywhere else then you're going to put in uh, other addresses as well and then finally contact uh, details for yourself so you can provide uh, a telephone number and email address email address for sure you would want to be providing as uh, the email address will be used to send you a confirmation when the application is submitted and then you get the option of picking what way you want to be um, contacted uh, if your application is successful then your preferred contact method may be used to send a reminder when the badge is due to expire so for sure you want to provide information there and see which one is uh, most suitable for you next up it's vehicle details so enter up to three vehicle registration numbers again this is actually quite mandatory so you should provide the vehicle registration numbers of up to three vehicles in which you are most likely to use a blue badge if your application is successful this information helps local authorities with the enforcement of the blue badge scheme rules but please note that you can use a blue badge in other vehicles too okay so that's the salient point it's not just the three vehicles that you uh, list here if you want to list them you're welcome to do so but you don't need to if you don't want to because you can use the blue badge in other vehicles too and then badge details so you can this is the section if uh, for example you already had hold a badge and you're just applying to renew it then you can just punch in any information about uh, the previous badge so in yes then you can punch in the name of the local authority that issued it the number on the badge and when it's due to expire as well So we're now at section two, which is evidence of the application process. So you want to go ahead and continue on. So first thing they ask you is proof of address. Your local authority will need to check that your main residence is in the local authority area. Supply a photocopy of any document selected bearing your name and address unless otherwise indicated. And again, you'll see the asterisk here showing that this is a mandatory field. You must fill it in. It's a key part of the application. So please select one of the following of the proof of addresses that you would supply with your application. So you have cancel tax bill bearing my name and address dated within the last 12 months. Or I do not pay council tax. I am over the age of 16 and give consent to a local authority to check my address on the electoral register. I give consent to a local authority to check my personal details on the local authority's council tax database so that I do not need to submit proof of my address. Award letter from service personnel and veterans agency. Benefit award letter from the Department for Work and Pensions. 
confirmation letter from social services or another local authority service that the person is resident confirmation letter from the school that the child attends at that school if under 16 copy of a valid driving license housing benefit or other type of benefit awarded a uh, war letter dated within the last 12 months or pensions letter from the pension service next up is proof of identity so to reduce the potential for fraudulent applications for a blue badge your local authority will need to check your identity you must supply a photocopy of one of the following as proof of your identity again it's a mandatory requirement as per the asterisk so please select one of the options below so a birth certificate or adoption certificate a certificate of British nationality civil partnership or dissolution certificate passport identity card for foreign nationals HM forces ID card a marriage or divorce certificate or a valid driving license So now we're at section 3 which is medical condition. For example I picked uh, applicants with walking difficulties so this is the section where you're going to provide information pertaining to your medical condition. So asterisk here, key, uh, key piece of information here you're going to provide to support your application so it's absolutely vital you, you fill in information into that, this box. So please describe any medical conditions and or disabilities which affect your walking. If you know them please state the medical terms for the conditions or disabilities with which you have been diagnosed so that's mandatory next up is uh, an optional uh, piece of the application but it could definitely help out if uh, if it applies to you so for sure fill it in uh, please describe any surgery courses of treatment you have undergone or specialist clinics you have attended in relation to each medical condition or disability you have mentioned please state when you underwent any relevant surgery or treatment or unattended or attended specialist clinics so in this field you'll type in any surgery treatment or clinic that you've undergone and the date when it occurred and then further on you go to what medication do you currently take in relation to the conditions or disabilities you described above again this is optional but if you want to provide as much information pertaining to your um, health condition or disabilities that you're suffering with uh, for sure be as thorough with the information you provide um, there's no harm in providing that information so just grab that uh, medication and you can just put in the information as it appears on the prescription label and finally rounding off this section is please describe any pain relief you are taking in relation to the medical conditions or disabilities you mentioned above and the frequency you need it again this is an optional box but if you want to be thorough and provide as much information as possible for sure go ahead and fill in this section as well The next section is current status. So again, for applicants with walking difficulties, in the example that I'm using, uh, you are met with again a mandatory field that you have to fill in with information. So, applicants with walking difficulties, please tick whichever statements apply to you and provide further details in the space below if necessary. So you can actually pick a multitude of these options if more than one of them applies to you, or if none of them apply to you. So, first up is I am awaiting surgery in relation to the conditions or disabilities described above. I am recuperating from surgery in relation to the conditions and disabilities described above. I am awaiting treatment in relation to the conditions and disabilities described above. Or I am managing my conditions and disabilities since I have been advised that you are not expected to improve any further. Or finally, none of the above. And if you want to go into as much detail as possible, I highly recommend it just filling in as much information about uh, your, your situation, uh, how you deal with day-to-day -day life and what, what obstacles you uh, you face uh, with your walking difficulties in this box. Next up there's another asterisk here so of course this is a mandatory field. Please give details of the healthcare professionals or specialists including your GP who have been treating you in relation to the conditions or disabilities described above. So of course you'll be providing the details of course of your GP, uh, so their name, their job title, general practitioner, medical doctor, uh, the hospital healthcare center or the surgery they operate out of and the surgery's number and obviously if you see anyone else that's a specialist uh, in, in healthcare you can provide them so a physiotherapist for example you could provide as well next up another asterisk so this is a, a mandatory field do you anticipate that your conditions or disabilities will improve in the next three years so you hit yes no or don't know and if you have entered yes, please describe how much you expect your conditions or disabilities to improve. So obviously this would only be um, this box would only be filled in if you hit yes in this option. 
and again you round off this section with another mandatory uh, question here so how do the conditions disabilities you described above affect your ability to walk so this is the box you really want to fill in with as much information as possible pertaining to what the uh, conditions and disabilities that you're facing uh, are are like when you actually are walking or what kind of difficulties you face um, and you want to go into as much detail as possible so just to uh, highlight the, that you you know you obviously require a blue badge due to these difficulties and then you head on over and hit next so we're now in section 5 which is known as walking ability so applicants with walking difficulties click Please tick whichever of the following statements describe your general walking ability. So again, you're uh, provided a multitude of scenarios and you can tick as many or uh, none that apply to your uh, predicament. And again, the asterisk signifies that this is a mandatory field. So you know, with I am able to walk well, including recreational walks. I'm able to walk around the supermarket to do my own shopping. I'm able to walk and use public transport for some of my local trips. I'm able to walk but struggle with longer distances or hills. I'm able to walk but get breathless if I walk for more than a few minutes. I'm able to walk but find it too painful to walk for more than a few minutes. I'm able to walk but use a wheelchair for longer trips outside the home. I'm able to walk around my home but I'm unable to climb the stairs. I am unable to walk at all or other and if you tick other then you'll have to provide information pertaining to what that other is just giving as much information as possible as these other uh, statements have provided as well so you can tick as many uh, that are applicable to you the next up are you able to walk outside without help again it's a yes or a no question and it's mandatory if you answer no above please describe the help you need so go again go into as much detail as possible so do you have a friend that you can support on do you have crutches a walking stick a frame wheelchair trolley wherever you may use is going to as much detail as possible as to how you're able to walk outside without help um, and next up where in your local area can you comfortably walk to from your home so please state a specific location or landmark which could be found on a map e.g. a shop street address or park so in this box you want to fill in a, a place that you can comfortably walk to from your home so for example if you have a, a corner shop nearby um, or a pub or something like that that you can comfortably walk to you can just list that here and of course with modern technology this information can, for this establishment can be found uh, through online and then this can be found and then obviously between your home and that uh, destination it will come up with um, a matter of distance for, for the um, local authority to, to gather just how far or how not far you can walk Next up, uh, please select the option that best describes the way you walk. So normal, no specific problems with walking. Adequate, for example, you walk with a slight limp. Poor, for example, you walk with a heavy limp, a stiff leg or shuffle, or have problems with balance. Extremely poor, for example, you drag your leg, stagger, swing through two crutches, or need physical support, or other. If none of the above describes the way you walk, please tell us in your own words about the way you walk in the space provided below, which you would provide in this box here. And once you've filled in this section, you'll hit next to get to the next section. So move on to section six, which is walking aids. Applicants with walking difficulties. Do you use any of the following walking aids? Please select whichever options apply to you. You can select more than one. So again, you have a multitude of options and you can just select as many of the aids that are applicable to your situation. So you have one elbow crutch, two elbow crutches, one walking stick, two walking sticks, a walking frame, otherwise known as a Zimmer frame, a rollator, a wheelchair, a powered wheelchair, or other. And then please describe below so you can put down here maybe any other sort of uh, item you use to walk maybe or you balance on a shopping trolley for example. Um, and then please describe how your walking aids were provided and you can tick whichever options are applicable to you. So you can say you purchased, purchased privately by me, provided by social services, prescribed by a healthcare professional or other and again if it's other you just point the details in of how you acquired that walking aid. And then here is an asterisk field um, and it's a really important field so for sure take your time in thinking about this 
and uh, just be as detailed as possible and as accurate as you possibly can this will really um, come in handy when the local authority is assessing your situation so how far would you estimate you are able to walk using any walking aids before you feel severe discomfort so again this is without walking without any walking aids and then before uh, dis severe discomfort kicks in so you put in the distance here in either yards or meters and please set the distance in meters or yards using whichever measure is best for you so you have a choice as to how you would like to, to put in that information and there's some information about uh, the distances of yards and meters and what an average adult um, walks so take that into account before you make your own calculations and it, a good way to kind of uh, approach this is if you were to use some landmarks in your area that you know you can go to Google Maps for example you can put in those establishments and then just do a distance measurement between that that uh, establishment and your home and Google is quite good it can give you the exact um, amount of distance in in a multitude of different measuring uh, abilities so yards and meters where it may be and then you can actually then put that in as accurately as possible in this field so that could be quite helpful to you as well if you're if you don't want to just make a guess you want to be as, uh, as accurate as possible as this is quite a key element of the application and then next up, roughly how many minutes would you estimate it takes you to walk this distance? So number of minutes you'll punch in again. Uh, so you, you put in the minutes that you uh, approximate would be in this box. And are you able to continue walking after a short rest? So then you hit yes or no. And if you can continue, roughly how many minutes are you able to walk for in total? So this is the number of minutes you'll be walking for in total in this field. And the next bunch of questions here before we round off this section is please answer yes or no to each of the following questions. Are you troubled by shortness of breath, breath when hurrying on level ground or walking up a slight hill? Do you get short of breath walking with other people of your own age on level ground? Do you have to stop for breath when walking at your own pace on level ground? And do you get too breathless to leave your home or after dressing? So once you provide the information for these sections, you'll hit next and you'll get on to the next section. So as we get to the end of the application, we're at now section seven, which is declarations. So further information declarations. Is there anything else you can add that you think is, is relevant in support of your application for a blue badge? Now, although this is an optional section, I would highly implore you to fill in the section with anything else that you think would be relevant to your application, uh, whether it's small or big, it could uh, potentially play uh, the deciding factor. You never know for your application. so please go into as much detail as possible um, for this and you can also extend here as well so uh, don't feel like you only have to fill in this small amount of section it does expand for you quite a bit so please go into as much detail as possible it can be a real help um, next up please read the following mandatory declaration so a really key thing to to read take in digest uh, this information before you make your declaration so please tick all relevant boxes to indicate that you have read understand and agree with each declaration not ticking one of these declarations may mean we are unable to issue with a blue badge that's absolutely key so don't forget to tick the boxes that are applicable because it could just render your application uh, uh, as uh, something that they wouldn't proceed with so really take that into account uh, providing fraudulent information may result in prosecution and a fine so please be as honest as possible with your, with your um, declarations so I confirm that as far as I know the details I've provided are complete and accurate I realize that you may take action against me if I have provided false information in this application form I understand that I must not hold more than one valid blue badge at any time I understand that I must promptly inform my local issuing authority of any changes that may affect my entitlement to a badge I understand that the local authority may need to contact an accredited healthcare professional for the purpose of obtaining further information in support of my application I confirm that the photograph I will submit with my application is a true likeness I understand that I may be required to undertake a mobility assessment with a healthcare professional who is independent of my existing care and treatment in order to determine my eligibility for a blue badge. I understand that if my application is successful, I must not allow any other person to use the badge for their benefit and that I must only use the badge in accordance with the rules of the scheme as set out in the blue badge scheme rights and responsibilities in England, leaflet which will be sent to me with the badge. 
I confirm that I am the applicant so you want to tick all these boxes okay don't miss any of them out because it could just uh, it could really jeopardize your application um, and then please read and tick the following optional declarations that you can send to so here you can see uh, mandatory so you have to tick all these boxes and then optional so the ones that only um, are relevant to you okay ticking these boxes will help to improve the service we can offer you so I can sense a local authority checking any information already held by the local authority social services department on the basis that it can help determine my eligibility for a blue badge it may speed up the processing of my application it may enable a decision to be made without the need for a mobility assessment so I agree to disclosure of information included in this form to other council department services providers so that I can be informed about other council services that may be of benefit to me and then heading down is the photo section so if you have a digital photo that's scanned or you've taken it's on your computer you can just upload that instead of actually providing a physical photo which can obviously be much more speedy especially nowadays that you might have a lot more on your on your computer so for further information about the format of digital images select the digital image help link as well but it's the most general uh, uh, links that your uh, digital uh, formats that you can use so for example a JPEG uh, is fine and then you must confirm that you have read this pr privacy statement as well so this is about privacy and data protection about yourself and what you're submitting and then you'll finally look out for this asterisk because you have to tick this box I confirm I've read this privacy statement so you have to tick that box okay and then upload proofs so if you have digital Im images of any proofs required you can upload them by selecting the relevant upload button selecting the button, button will also provide further information regarding the format of proofs so in this section for example uh, from early on in the application when we were providing forms of address proof of address excuse me and proof of identity I just selected council tax bill dating in the last 12 months but remember if you head on back to earlier in the section you can you'll get a whole host of different things you can upload or if you just select to have your information found through the records this won't even be generated so that'd be one less thing for you to upload and then finally it'd be proof of identity upload so for example a passport or a driving license again from early on in the application depending on which one you pick uh, is what will be requested and upload so once you hit upload it will give you a, a range of options as to what format can be taken on uh, as part of your application and then rounding off this section is paying for the badge so please be advised that the cost of a badge is £10 you can choose to pay this by credit or debit card now or arrange to pay your local authority direct later you will only be charged if your application is approved so at this stage you're just providing your payment details but not the actual payment is not taken and is held until the actual application is approved and just to be clear that the Visa and MasterCards are taken on and then here is the mandatory section so you can just hit if you want to pay now by credit or debit card so it'll be yes or no and then you go on to submit application So if you do opt to pay by credit or debit card, you'll be met at section eight, which is payment. You just fill in the payment details as possible, uh, as uh, as provided on your credit or debit card, and an email address will be highly recommended so you can get a receipt sent to you. And then obviously again, don't forget that the payment will be held until the actual approval occurs. So if your blue badge isn't approved, you're not going to be charged. But if it is approved, you'll be charged ten pounds. And then finally you'll be greeted at section 9 confirmation so you'll be given an application number to provide in all future correspondence and you'll be given the information about the local authority of your contact uh, and then basically you'll be provided with information about when the payment is taken uh, and if your application is successful and if any you have to provide any other further information it will also be outlined on this page of the confirmation page so do take note of all the reference numbers and you'll also have option to hit print if need be I would highly recommend it or you can at least copy and paste this and, and stick it in a, an email or you can just get a screen grab as well if that's more helpful and there's a bunch of information about your your application so definitely read this confirmation page rounding off the blue badge application now I must stress that when applying for a blue badge a lot of the local authorities they do heavily scrutinize your application and it could really depend on the information you provided as well as the supporting information you provide if you've got letters from GPs and, and medical professionals to uh, to back up your your situation they will go a long way in assisting you and hopefully ending with you receiving a blue badge uh, if your application is for whatever reason um, 
denied you are given the ability to uh, to appeal and again I would for sure uh, write a detailed uh, letter or email uh, in response to that um, denial uh, pleading that you want to appeal the, the, the decision and providing again as much documentation as possible from medical professionals uh, regarding your your disabilities or your condition just to give as much information as possible so if at that first hurdle you aren't successful it's not the end then you know you can just provide and dig out as much information pertaining to the situation as possible and uh, appeal the decision and it could still very well be overturned and you could potentially still uh, obtain the blue badge after much consideration or if you have to attend a, a, an in-person uh, assessment then for sure do that as well uh, so that you can uh, genuinely receive a blue badge to aid you in uh, your disability or your medical condition that makes it difficult uh, otherwise or can at least relieve a burden on yourself or others uh, due to your condition. Uh, I wish you all the best with uh, your application. If you like this video or if it was helpful to you in any way please uh, like the video or write a comment share with anyone else you, you think may benefit from this video and subscribe for further videos with uh, application help appreciate your viewership and i'll see you next time around bye